I want to tell you something you definitely need to hear. And for that reason, this video is not going to have any fancy editing. I'm not going to sell you anything. We're just going to get straight into why the rules don't apply when you're trying to get a programming job. So let's get into it. Four ways. The first way is the salary rules don't apply in programming. And what I mean by that is compared to other high paying careers, let's say you got finance, you got medical, you got law, you got to go to college for at least four years, probably five or six. You got to invest all this money in college. And then you got to be in the field for several years before you work your way up above 100K. I personally studied finance in college. My classmates, they were all going for big banks, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley. You work 12 hour days, six days a week. And then after maybe three to four to five years of this, you make 100K. A lot of my classmates are just hitting that now and they've been working this whole time and I'm almost 30 at this point. And I won't even touch on, you know, going to medical school and all that, how hard you have to work, how much you have to study, how much debt you have to go into. It's just crazy. And you do get the reward later, but the rules don't apply to programming because you can literally do this within six months to a year and then be working in the field, making six figures plus in the right city. I think my first year of working all in, I made around 170 because you get not just cash salary, you get signing bonus, stock options, year end bonus, it's a lot. Okay, you probably know how good tech salaries are. You might already know that you can teach yourself programming with no degree, no debt, none of the BS, even if you miscalculated on your degree already, it's not too late to switch. But the second way, and I didn't realize this till later, is once you do get that first job, you have all the power as the worker. And it's not because you're in a programmer's union or anything like that. It's because good programmers are so highly in demand, the company will do everything they can to get you and to keep you. And that's why you get those insane perks. That's why you have a really good work-life balance. These crazy Google offices with playgrounds and free food and all this kind of stuff. It's because there will always be more demand than supply of good programmers. So if you can become a good programmer, then you can literally work anywhere you want. And the reason I say that is because there's always room for more good programmers at pretty much any company out there. And if you don't believe me, just look at their career websites. So I can't think of a better way to break into the industry you wanna get into, even if that industry is not tech, than to become a programmer. Because like I said, there's such a high demand, you can teach yourself this stuff. And of course the pay is good too. And if I do say so myself, the work is quite interesting. All right, the third way the rules don't apply with programming is you can burn your old resume. And what I mean by that is the normal things that matter on a resume no longer matter at all. So when you're applying for programming jobs, you should definitely structure your resume in a very different way. So what was important in the past? If we look at any traditional job, where you went to school, it's your work experience and not having gaps in your resume. It is listing some personal information at the bottom. Maybe you even put a picture on there. But here's the thing. It's a very different story when it comes to programming. Your track record is more about what you've done. What things have you built? What kind of systems have you worked on? What are your skills? And by the way, that gap, you took one, two, three years off, it doesn't matter, which is one of the things that really scared me about finance is you can be working your way up that ladder, you take six months off and you're done. You're never going back in there. So does having a brand name school or a brand name company on there help you? Yeah, of course it does. But it's not the end all be all. And the reason I know that is because I got my first job, I just had projects on there. And I can also tell you that within Uber or top tech companies, you're gonna meet people without degrees working on the same teams as people with degrees from Stanford as former Google software engineers because it's all about skill. And that brings me to the last way rules don't apply. Tech is the closest thing to a meritocracy that we have. So there's none of this BS, both in the interview and in the promotion process that are basically ingrained in us, right? Staying for a certain number of years, saying the right things, being super charismatic. We'll start with the interview because like I just said, you can have a Stanford graduate. If their skills aren't good in the interview, they're not gonna get the job no matter what. You can have a person with no college degree. If their skills are sick, they're gonna get that job. So it's really the most fair way I can think of to actually hire people. And it worked in my favor because 
I didn't have good grades in school. I didn't go to a good college. I didn't have the right degree. So this was really the best chance I was ever gonna have of getting a really good job. Now, of course, you have to get that interview first. But like I said, it's more about what you've done on your resume. So as long as you have that on point, and if you do what I did, you just get a referral or two to slide you in there for the interview, then it's your battle to lose. That actually creates some pressure though, because you can't use the excuse, I didn't go to a good enough college or anything like that. You just have to take it on yourself to learn the right skills and to get good enough to get in there. So pressure, but it's really, really fair. Now, internally, when it comes to promotions, and I can't speak for every company here, but it is usually gonna be about how much of an impact have you made. So other companies, you have to wait minimum five years before, let's say, moving up one level. All right. And then of course at the higher levels, it is about your impact, but programming takes this to an extreme where again, in my experience, if you lead a big project, then you're probably going to get promoted if you're working at punching above your weight, let's say. So again, in my case, I came in as an engineer level one. I led a whole big project to completion. Other people were on that team and I was kind of leading it. And of course, that's like not entry level work. So when I finished it, I was able to get promoted in just six months. So like I said, the normal stuff, waiting four or five years, sucking up to your manager, that stuff doesn't matter. It is almost purely about impact. So again, meritocracy, more fair, and it's just the best. And like I also said, this now puts all the pressure on you because you can't blame these rigid systems or structures on your lack of results. You just have to take it on yourself to skill up, dispel your limiting beliefs, and then get after it. I'm not sure how good of a motivational speaker I am, but I tried. <laughs> Want more videos like this? Tap like, tap subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.